Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 27, part C. We're in section 8.1, and this is part 3 of how to create a confidence interval for the mean when we know sigma. And so that's what we've been uh, working on up to this point, and we will continue in this video, uh, which is a pre-recorded video. So I hope you enjoy the slower pace of this uh, video. Now, 100% minus 95% equals 5%, um, which is 0 0.05, and this is equal to alpha, our significance level. So 0 0.05 times 1,000 equals 50 confidence intervals that will not contain mu. So just because we calculate a confidence interval doesn't mean that mu is actually in there. We want to know, but the higher our confidence is, the higher the confidence level is, so this is the confidence level, 95% is the confidence level, and 0.05 is our significance level, or alpha. So if we are 95% confident, or we have a confidence interval of 95%, then 950 out of that 1,000 should actually contain mu. Okay. So we like this to be a large uh, value, uh, but we'll see in a little while that having a large value can make the interval big, bigger, which is not what we want. So. In other words, if I tell you that um, the mean height of men in the U.S. is um, 5 foot 7 inches plus or minus uh, 8 inches, does that tell you a lot about the height the, the mean height or the average height of men. No, that's there's 16 inches total of variation here. That's from 4 foot um, 11 to, let's say, five, 6 foot 3, I believe. That's a huge range. That's a foot and a quarter. That's too big too big. But if I tell you that it's 5 foot 7 plus or minus uh, 1 half inch, then that goes from 5 uh, foot 6.5 inches to 5 foot uh, 7.5 inches. Well, that's only an inch total. That's pretty good. I feel a lot more uh, like I know what uh, the true mean height of men is in that case. So we don't want this interval to be too big. So um, we have to, the, and it turns out that the higher the confidence level, if we don't change anything else, the longer the confidence interval. And how we take care of that is we take a bigger sample size. So we'll talk about that again. For now, let's actually um, do an example. Actually, we're going to um, uh, find a formula. And so we're going to actually see what it is that a confidence interval is um, using notation that we already know. So let's say I have a... Um, a sample of n equals 36 uh, from a population um, with a variance of 9. And I take this sample, and the sample has a mean of 100. So x bar is equal to 100. I don't know what the mean of the population is. I want to estimate that. So the first thing I'm going to do is use x bar, okay? And so I want a 95% confidence interval. I want this to be 
So a 95% confidence interval. So the interval is going to be this here, and I don't know why I wrote x3 bar. Let's rewrite that. This will be x1 bar. This will be x bar from the sample, and this will be x2 bar. Okay, so I want a 95% um, confidence interval. So between these two numbers, x1 and x2, x1 bar and x2 bar, is 0.95. So how much is in each uh, tail? So I take 1 minus 0.95, and that's equal to 0.05. And because I want this 95% to be right in the middle, I'm going to divide this by 2 to get 0.025. And so this is 0.025, and this is 0.025. All right. So I'm going to say, I don't know anything about mu, but I'm going to say that the probability that x bar 1, so x bar, is between x bar 1 and x bar 2, that's going to be 0.95. Okay. Now, what would we do if we were solving this problem? Well, we would want to convert to a z-score. But remember, I have a sample of n equals 36, so I'm not just talking about one point. I'm talking about a sample of 36. So, when I get the z-score, I have to use the z-score for the central limit theorem. So I'm going to take x bar 1 minus mu and divide by the standard deviation of x bar, which is sigma over the square root of n. And I have to do this on all three um, parts of this inequality. Two minus mu over sigma over square root of n. Now I'm going to call this z1 and I'm going to call this z2. Okay, so a little backwards. Usually we put the z in the middle. Here I'm going to put it on either side. So what I end up with is z1, so x bar minus mu over sigma square root of n is between z1 and and z2. Now if we look at if we look at the standard normal distribution, the mean of it is zero. Now what we want here is we want the distance from x bar 1 to x bar and x bar 2 to x bar. We want these to be the same because we want it right in the middle. So then z1 and z2 are going to be the same distance from zero. So this tells me that z1 is equal to negative z2. Okay? All right. So now I'm going to um, I'm going to replace z1 with negative z2. All right, now I'm going to multiply all three sides by the denominator here. It's going to cancel out in the middle, and this is going to give me the probability negative z2 okay, times sigma divided by the square root of n, and then this will just leave x bar minus mu in the middle, and this will be positive z2 sigma square root of n. Now I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to um, subtract x bar from all three uh, portions because I need to get mu by itself. So I subtract x bar, I need negative x bar minus z2 times sigma over the square root of n, and I get negative mu, and I get um, negative x bar plus z2 sigma 
square root of n. Well, I don't want negative mu. I want positive mu, so I'm going to multiply all three sides by negative 1. And that means that I change all the signs, but I also have to flip these. So these are going to become x bar plus z2 sigma over square root of n. And x bar minus z2 sigma square root of n. And so I'm going to write this with the smallest over to the left and the largest over to the right like I normally do. So this gives me, um, so if I do that, I end up with um, x bar minus z2 sigma over the square root of n um, and mu in the middle and then x bar plus z2 sigma square root of n. And this is going to equal my confidence level. And so I have a confidence interval is x bar minus z sigma square root of n, x bar plus z sigma square root of n. I can also write it as x bar plus or minus z times sigma over the square root of n. These are formula for the confidence interval. Okay. And so I can say that z is going to be, I look up, 0.025, and I get that this is negative 1.96, so this is 1.96, so Z2 is 1.96, so I'd have 100 minus 1.96 times sigma, which is sigma equals the square root of 9, that's 3, 3 divided by the square root of 36 for my lower, and then I'd have 100 plus 1.96 times 3 over the square root of 36. The square root of 36 is 6, so this quantity here is 0.5, and this gives me 99.02 to 100.98. And that is my 95% uh, confidence interval. So I will uh, do some more examples on the next video. Hope you have a great uh, rest of the day. Well, that's the end of this video. So please remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight of the day on the course calendar. Uh, if you have questions, by all means, please come to virtual office hours. I am happy to help you. And if you can't do that, then, then by all means, email me. But when you email me, please email me a picture of both the problem, because I may not have access to that problem wherever I am, and a picture of your work, which allows me to know uh, how you're approaching the problem and help you best and the quickest. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Until then, stay safe and take care.